in Tibet. Ali, a mysterious ancient dynasty. Over the years, it has attracted the unremitting exploration of archaeologists. His history can be traced back to the bloody storm more than a thousand years ago. When Tibet's Tubo dynasty completely collapsed. This dynasty was miraculously born on a Jedi on the roof of the world. Archaeologist Zhang Jianlin has entered the Ali area many times. Investigate and excavate the ruins of the Guj dynasty. Can he reveal the mystery of this Guj dynasty for us? I am very unfamiliar with the word Guj. Then I think you must have known the word Guj much before me. When did you first hear about Gug? That was 1981. At that time, I was majoring in archaeology at Northwestern University, and in the Cultural Relics magazine I studied archaeology for 81 years, I published a briefing report on the joint investigation of Gyuch by the Tibet Cultural Management Association and the Xinjiang Cultural Management Association. Not too many words. About five or six thousand words. But I posted a set of pictures. At that time, the photos in the magazines were not special and the printing was not particularly good. Um. But I think that would be very shocking. Because I know this place from the map. It's in the far west of Tibet. On the border with India, Nepal and Kashmir. This place is in this remote place. And that place. Extremely harsh natural conditions. There is such a large-scale ancient castle. There are beautifully preserved murals inside. I feel that it is the feeling of another Dunhuang appearing. This is the first time I heard Gyuj and saw Gyuj, and I was very impressed at that time. Now the Gyuj dynasty has been dead for more than 300 years. Only a piece of ruins are left abandoned on the Ali Plateau. The mysterious atmosphere emanating from the ruins. Strong temptation Zhang Qianlin to discover everything in it. By 84. At that time, the state administration of cultural heritage gave each province, city, and autonomous region a task of conducting a census of cultural relics. Then Tibet should also conduct a census of cultural relics. But at that time, there was no cultural relic bureau in Tibet. The strength of only one business person of the Cultural Affairs Commission is relatively weak. It is almost impossible to complete the census of artifacts independently. Um, so he always wanted to find some people from other provinces to work with them. At that time, after the Tibet Culture Office and the Shangxi Culture Office had negotiated, the cadres sent from Shangxi will do the cultural relic census together with them. April 1984 on and off. How did you know there was such news? At that time, I was in the Provincial Cultural Relics Bureau. I'm helping the Cultural Relics Bureau to do that cultural relics protection propaganda. So I got the news first. It means that this registration is also my first application. After finishing, Form this team and lead this team. At that time, the Cultural Relics Bureau also asked me to do it. I think it's very good. Actually, it's been two years. After two years. Your Gyuj stream is not over yet. Right. 1984. Zhang Jianlin as the captain of the archaeological team. Led a group of horses to Lhasa, Tibet. The archaeological team from Lhasa has traveled more than 2,000 kilometers. Difficult step by step approaching the Guj dynasty. At this time, Zhang Jianlin was only 28 years old. The average age of members of the archaeological team is also less than 30 years old. But they were the first Chinese archaeologists to formally excavate the Guj site. Before every time I go out for archaeology. As a captain. Seems like there should be a goal, right? Or what are you looking for? Or did you go to this with any doubts? Can you tell us what kind of idea we went to Gyuj at the time? Or Gyuj who went with some doubts? In general. At that time, the academic community knew very little about Gyuj. It's just that there are so many problems that he didn't understand. Um. So how big was the scope of its Gyuj kingdom that governed this area at that time? How many ruins are there from that era? And what else is left of this? 
we just don't understand. And about how his demise was perished. To investigate, there is another very important purpose. As a general archaeology, the purpose of this investigation and the purpose of the investigation is that you have to figure out this as a site. The total extent of the site. The number of its remains. This category of remains. Then, on this basis, analyze his politics, economy, culture, religion at that time. Foreign exchange. Can these materials provide more information on cultural exchanges? Study his history of this, this, and this time to restore his living conditions at that time. In fact, as early as 1912, an English traveler named McKethian came to Ali. He wrote this line in his notes. This may be the ruins of a huge city or an old castle. Since then, Gyuch has attracted the attention of many Tibetan experts in the world. But over the years, he half covered the mysterious sand. People have never been able to rely on the fragments of this dynasty's history. How much do you know about Gyuch at this time? That is, I read a lot of materials before leaving for Gyuj. But at that time, the information that could be found in Lhasa was very limited. Um, there are only some historical books that have been translated from Tibetan into Chinese. At that time, there were no books on Tibetan archaeology translated from abroad. Only later did we say something about the history of the Gyuj kingdom and the archaeology of the Gyuj. Still don't know much. Um... Just can you tell me how the Gyuj dynasty was established? Gyuj dynasty. Built. In fact, his history should be traced back to the history of the late Tubo dynasty. It was the middle of the 9th century AD. Tibet is under the rule of the Tubo dynasty. At this time, a nobleman named Dhamma ascended the throne of Tibet. As soon as Dharma came to power, he launched a huge campaign to destroy Buddhism. This anti-Buddhist campaign sparked a battle between religion and the royal family. Eventually, the whole of Tibet was plunged into war. Soon, Dharma was stabbed to death. The once prosperous Tubo dynasty disappeared in an instant. After more than 30 years of war, Jid Nyama, the grandson of Dhamma, the last generation in power in Tubo, fled after being chased by various forces forced to come to Ali area. Despite the harsh natural environment, remote, stay away from war. And the local king of Ali not only did not drive out Jid Nyama, he even betrothed his daughter to him. Help him become king. Yumai of the Tubo dynasty. Only then did it take root on the Ali plateau. He not only took over this territory of the kingdom, and he became king. After being the king, he has made a very large expansion of the original territory. It is equivalent to basically taking down the place of Ali. So he will come. That's why there will be such a saying in the back. That's why he sealed his three sons to three places. Then he must have ruled this place. It is possible for him to disperse his three sons in separate seals. For a time, three dynasties arose on the Ali Plateau. Gyuj dynasty is one of them. It was created by Deji, the youngest son of Gidni Magan. Since then, the entanglement between the three blood brothers has spread for a full 700 years. Um, the area is not very large. But he should be in this area of 60,000 to 70,000 square kilometers, which is not very large. It's a small kingdom, isn't it? Of the small kingdom. Although limited historical data. People can piece together the origin of the Gyuj dynasty. 
but the historical details cannot be found in the history books. The rise and fall of this dynasty has always been a secret that people want to explore. And the Gujas on such a desolate plateau. How the dynasty lasted 700 years. This is even more surprising. I now want you to tell us about the first time you saw the ruins of the capital city of the Guj dynasty. That day I think your impression may be very deep. It was an exciting day. Um, because his, his, and that landscape is. From the valley we were a big truck. It's the old Jifong convertible truck. I'll sit there and build a shed. The front is the front is the field road. And two that Beijing Jeep. The road is also very bad. It's like bumping from the pebbles in the riverbed. Climb that slope. As soon as you go up the slope, this earthy hill will come out in front of you. That feeling is really shocking. Although I have seen many pictures. Also saw this article about him. Um, but when it suddenly appeared, that feeling is really exciting. Um, because he looks so awesome. In the dazzling sunshine of the plateau. On this hill of earth uprooted from the ground. The ruins that still stand. Proof of the glory of an ancient dynasty. This is the capital of the Gyuj dynasty. Deep in a dark cave. There have been many untold stories. Then in the age of the Gyuj. What kind of life does a group of people live here? How are they creating their spiritual world and material world? These long-standing stories. Urged Zhang Jianlin and his teammates to start their hard search. How do you go about doing a survey? Um. Uh, one is the ancient city of Gyuj at that time. It was called Gyuj Kingdom Ruins. I changed it later. Ancient city of Gyuj. Because of the ruins of the Gyuj Kingdom. It refers to all the ruins of the Gyuj Kingdom period. It should be called Gyuj Kingdom Ruins. What about this place? In fact, as a capital city. According to archaeological custom. What is it called what the ancient city? For example, an ancient city like Lingzi ancient city was abandoned as a capital in the past. Then when we find it again. What do you call it an ancient city? You are actually visiting the ruins of the capital of the Guj dynasty. The capital is in Zada county. Zabujang this place. So sometimes it is also called Zabu. Let the castle be such a place. Um, then it was his capital as a kingdom. Since he is a kingdom. Then he must have many other sites from the same period. Except for the ruins of the capital on Zaburang Mountain. There are also many ancient monasteries and grottos in Guj's hometown. At this time, Zhang Jianlin could not imagine what the Guj dynasty was like. 